Hello and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and the Tamiya M4 Sherman Early Production. So, left off last time, I'm going to do some uh, more paint. And here's what I have so far. Primer, Steinle Res uh, Gray instead of uh, black this time. And um, I use Tamiya XF62 for the Olive Drab. Then I maxed, uh, maxed up mixed up another batch of uh, XF62 um, with some XF59 at a ratio of one part XF59 which is desert yellow three parts olive drab XF62 um, and kind of uh, highlighted a few spots, kind of I guess you'd call a modulation deal. I mainly wanted to lighten up the larger portions of the panels. And I used the old handy dandy Neo TRN1. Man, the control on that thing is just spectacular for my quivery old hands. So, anyway, that part is, uh, that part is done. So, I'm going to do next right now is I'm going to paint the rubber portion of the uh, wheels with um, it's called dark gray blue doesn't have much of a blue cast to it but it's the darkest gray that I have because I don't like using just black and uh, I like using the model air whoops sorry I like using the model air because it's very brushable don't have to thin it or anything and it, it works really good I like I like using this especially for stuff like that so I'm going to start painting that and then uh, we'll come back and take a look and uh, after I get those the tire portions painted then I'll be able to start weathering underneath there so I can put on the uh, sand skirt. So let me get cracking on that and I'll come back. Alright. <clears throat> um, I got the uh, running gear and the tracks weathered as you can see and the side skirts attached um, I've also got the uh, tools installed and some dust on here uh, tools installed and painted or I'm the tools painted and the rear deck the front's not done because I'm gonna do that with everything else but before I get too crazy and go very much further um, what I need to do I've decided I was going to do this just all of drab but um, <clears throat> in looking at the instructions I don't know why I noticed it or if I did I didn't pay attention originally I'd wanted to do uh, this scheme right here uh, Fifth, uh, 756 Tank Battalion, 5th Army, Italy in February 44, but because I'd installed the, uh, ex the additional armor plate for the, um, good grief, for the uh, stowage, uh, ammo stowage, I decided I wouldn't, I mean, I want to keep it reasonably accurate, so that was out. But then, in looking at the back, I don't know if I just didn't notice it or, you know, what the deal was, but um, <clears throat> this is 66 Armored Regiment, 2nd Armored Division, Normandy, and it calls for um, XF-62, which is olive drab, and XF-64, which is red-brown. Now, um, I've read that <clears throat> the red brown to me is red brown is like it's kind of a reasonable facsimile but not totally accurate as far as you know the color should be um, maybe it was a little bit darker brown or something like that but it is the closest of the Tamiya paints right out of the bottle and since this is you know as I've said from the beginning kind of a quick project that I don't you know um, I'm gonna go ahead and use that and then once I get the weathering and all that type of stuff on it it's going to uh, it will um, you know change the color the brown color anyways 
So it, it, I think it'll be fine. And again, I'm not doing it total with, for total accuracy or else I'd have books and I'd be making sure the whole shooting match. So I'm going to use that and then I can start actually uh, doing the weathering on the rest of the vehicle. Now, one thing I am going to do, um, and I've never really found a definitive answer. I do know for sure that it was uh, a practice sometimes with German armor <coughs> that when the vehicle got to the wherever it was going to be uh, used, it would be in say, you know, the uh, German yellow color, Dunkel, Dunkel Gelp. And whenever they would spray the camouflage on, they would spray right over the tools and everything. So that is what I am going to do on this. Is this correct? I don't know. And it's not because I don't want to repaint the stuff. It's just I think it'll add a little bit of realism slash... Um, originality to it um, so you know for good or ill that's what I'm gonna do and if you know too many people say that's dumb and it doesn't look right then maybe I'll paint it or I'll maybe I'll just tell them to take a hike and I'm painting it the way I want whatever so but I'm gonna do that and the running gear um, I'm gonna you know mask that off with some paper or something uh, just so it doesn't get all over that since that is complete and then once that dries, then I can start the weathering process. So I'm going to bust out with the uh, XF64 Red Brown and my handy dandy Iwata TRN1 and start painting. So I will be back after I get that done. All right. I got the uh, camouflage sprayed on the XF64 as noted in the 66th Armored Regiment, 2nd Armored Division, Normandy, August 1944, on the Tamiya instructions. Whether or not, and I mentioned this before, whether or not it's the accurate color, I don't know. I just wanted to do it for the uh, practice with camouflage. And I'm sure it's a reasonable facsimile. Now I did add um, a little bit of uh, NATO black to the brown because it just looked too brown. Um, and I wanted to tone it down a little bit. So I think uh, the um, the colors are a little more even as far as the chroma goes. So um, the next thing I need to do is apply the decals. And normally I like to use um, dry transfers, Archer dry transfers, but in this case, I'm going to use the Tamiya decals because I got a new bottle of Solvacet. Um, I did a little bit of research and a little bit of reading, and as I've mentioned before in some of my other videos, I've got this bottle of Solvacet here that I have had, wow, uh, probably, I don't know, 40 years? Could be 40 years, maybe not quite that long. But anyway, it's very, very, very old from a very defunct hobby shop, B&F Hobbies. Um, you know what, this might be about 20 years old. This might be a replacement bottle, regardless. It's very old. And um, I think it might have, it could have lost some of its potency. Um, I know I have to apply a lot more of this than I remember applying back in the old days. And uh, when I got this uh, bottle, this new bottle of Solvacet the other day, I noticed that um, it was quite a bit stronger smelling than than um, this bottle here. This bottle doesn't have much odor at all. So I think it's just lost its potency. I think the, the active ingredient, whatever it is, may have evaporated and all that's left is the carrier. I don't know. But it is kind of uh, it's not working as well. So all that said, I'm going to use the Tamiya decals, which are generally pretty thick. It can be stubborn at times. I'm going to use those decals. I'm going to trim them as close as I can to the uh, to the 
decal itself, the printed part, and try it. And the main thing is going to be seeing if it, the number two, settles in over that um, pistol port there, or ammo loading port, or whatever tarnation it is. See how well it uh, settles in over that. So that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go get some warm water and start applying these decals. Okay, um, I got the decals on and I went ahead and I changed my mind on leaving this um, you know, oversprayed with the camouflage color because um, after I thought about it the more I thought about it, the more I figured um, if they would take the time to stencil the unit markings on the vehicle, then they would probably take the time to take the tools off, you know, um, to do the camo color. So that was my reasoning there. Um, the decals, they actually worked pretty good for Tamiya decals. Um, they're, they're really shiny right now, and you can see a little bit of the film from the um, Solva set, but that will clean off. And I must say that this Solva set, this new bottle of Solva set, works like 50,000 times better than the old bottle. Um, it's obvious that old bottle's shot. So, um, you know, it really snuggled down into the, uh, the details. And the one I was really worried about was this one right here. The number two um, over this uh, port here, there's a lot of detail, hinge detail and so forth on there. And I thought, wow, you know, that's going to prove difficult. But hopefully you can see in the video, it totally conformed to the hinge detail and wrapped itself around. So once this thing gets uh, a little bit of uh, some washes on it, some weathering it's gonna look really good so I've got the deta uh, details painted and uh, the only thing I haven't done is the headlights and uh, that will be the very last thing I do because I don't want to weather those up, up too much um, but for the most part it is uh, done right now and I have discovered a new paint to use for black um, I generally use black for, you know, uh, a base coat on the machine guns and then I'll, you know, um, do a little bit of dry brushing with uh, a silver of some kind or a gun met or a metallic color of some kind. But, you know, I got to thin the paint and all that kind of stuff. Well, I ordered this bottle of NATO black in the Model Air and it works really, really well. Um, it brushes on great. I was able to do the uh, the head pads um, on the hatches, and uh, I really like that. So that's going to be my go-to paint for black, I think, um, including the, uh, the rubber portion of the wheels from here on out. Good stuff. So take note, people. So with that, decals are done, detail painting's done. Um, I think that is pretty much it. Uh, for now, I'm gonna let all this dry really well, and then I will start with weathering. And I will be using, um, I just got, I've heard so many good things about the Obtiloon, uh, 502 Obtiloon uh, model oil color, modeling oil color, and um, I have to say that on my first messing around with it, uh, it does seem to be better quality than, say, the Windsor Newton uh, colors I was using. Now, granted, they may be a cheap Windsor Newton brand, I don't know, or uh, series, but this is, seems a lot smoother. Now, I did use uh, one of the one of the brown colors for a wash, and I did not have any particles in the paint or in the wash. It was really super smooth, and it seemed to say it seemed to stay suspended in the thinner much better. So I think that's going to be some good stuff. But that's what I'm going to use to uh, um, 
weather this thing. So I think with that, I'm going to call this video quits and uh, wrap it up. And when I come back, uh, we'll start with the weathering and uh, see what happens and eventually get to the uh, figure. So anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me on Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. As always, any questions or comments, put them below. I'll answer them as quickly as possible. Thanks again, and I will see you all later.